Oh my gosh. Hi everyone. I am so excited because it is January 1st of 2024. Um, and this is a new year. It's the opportunity for a fresh start. It's the opportunity to either make resolutions or goals or whatever you decide you want to make. Everyone is different and that is super cool. Um, but it's also the chance for us to just kind of think back on how far we've come or the things we've learned or, um, what has worked for us. And so today's episode is going to be a little bit about that. Um, I'm going to share with you two of two questions that I got this year that seemed to be along the same lines of a lot of questions I got throughout the year. Um, and I'll answer them for you. And then I'm also going to share the top three, um, Instagram reels that I created in the last two months of the year that were the most popular. And I'm going to talk about why I think that is and just some of my thoughts on that. And then I'm going to wrap it up with some amazing things that we have to look forward to in 2024 that I think you're going to be just as excited about as I am. So that's kind of our what we're going to do today. I'm really looking forward to it. It's just going to be you and I. It's a Mondays with Melissa. So if you need to pause this and go grab your coffee, your tea, run to Starbucks real quick, you can totally do that and come back. Um, but we're just going to jump right in. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to, I'm going to give you the two questions that I saw. So, um, basically the theme. Okay. So there's two questions that I saw come up a lot this year, whether it was through social media or people texting me or, um, in the monthly membership group that that I run that if you're interested in, you should check it out because it's super fun. Um, and so I'm going to just go over those. So the first question, this was actually um, a question from the monthly membership, but so I wrote it down pretty close to what the question was, but also a, a lot of questions came in this year about this topic. So the question is, what are some tips on staying regulated and not overstimulated in a house full of loud, busy kids? Because us parents, you guys, we can be overstimulated too and dysregulated. And what do we do? Because we still have to parent. We still have to be present. We still have to do all the things, right? So this came up a lot. And I think um, for very good reason, because being a parent is really hard and not a lot of people talk about how hard it is for us to um, stay regulated ourselves and um, provide for our kids what they need from us. So here, I'm going to give you four things that I think could be helpful in the moment when you are starting to feel, well, the first thing really is to be able to be mindful of that feeling, to know in your body I'm starting to feel activated. Um, and I know that's kind of like a therapeutic term, but I really like that term because it makes sense in my brain. If that doesn't make sense in your brain, you can use the word regulated. You, or I'm sorry, dysregulated. You can use the word yucky. You can, whatever resonates for you. But the idea is you just start to feel that like, ugh, inside of you. Um, and for me, it's like, I, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can see I'm kind of holding my chest because that's where it is. It's in my chest. Sometimes it moves down into my belly, but it's this like almost like that dark cloud that is over, um, oh, in the Peanuts show in Charlie Brown. Um, I can't think of his name, Linus, I think that has like a little dark cloud over his head. That's what it feels like right here in my chest. And so I start to feel activated inside of me. And so that's actually the first step is for us to be mindful and aware that there is something that is not quite right. So once I can identify that and be mindful of that, that's when then these next four things can be helpful. So the first one is don't be ashamed, embarrassed, afraid, whatever, to put on noise canceling headphones, put on the noise canceling headphones. You can still hear your kids to know if they need something. You can still hear them when they're talking to you. It's, it's not like it completely drowns out every sound and you're unavailable. It just dampers it. Um, another idea uh, that someone in our monthly membership group had was um, headphones. So some of the newer AirPods have that noise canceling um, aspect to them. And so you could put in your AirPods and it kind of buffers the sound a little bit. And so just basically what we want to think about is actually, I also had a parent that I just thought of this and I think it's, it was pretty funny and I liked it and it made sense to my brain. And so <laughs> I'm just going to share it with you. I had a parent who sent me a picture of himself. 
I don't know if it was socks or what it was, but he had like this stack of some, some sort of fabric. Like, I don't know. I think it was socks maybe, but like three or four pairs of them. And then they were, it was like strapped to his head somehow. Um, and so that was his way of kind of like buffering the sound. So if we're aware that all that extra noise from our kids that really they can't control is too much for our system, just buffer the sound, put on something over your ears to help it not be so intrusive. Okay. The second thing is drink something cold. So I know I've talked about this in past episodes, um, but the idea that if we can almost shock our system to like something ice cold in drinking that down right next. It's for, so for me, I feel activated right here in my chest. And so if I drink something cold, it goes right past it. And it kind of like brings that awareness and brings, it kind of just grounds me a little bit and cools me off. Um, and I know I'm saying personally, but I also know this works. So scientifically it, whether you're drinking something cool or if you, um, drinks a hot cup of coffee. So kind of that like shock to your system of a temperature change can be helpful to regulating your body. Okay. So the third thing would be, let's take everyone for a walk. We're all loud. They're all loud. It's so much the noise canceling headphones maybe aren't working, or maybe I just don't feel right doing that. Pack everyone in the car. Let's go down to the trail. Um, you know, if in our area, there's several trails that you can go to and just walk the trail and let the kids explore and throw rocks in the river and, um, you know, just like be out in nature, moving our bodies, being able to just like breathe the fresh air, hearing sounds, kind of that grounding work of what do I see? What do I feel? What do I hear? Um, and, and just letting us get our bodies, the wiggles out. So that would be my fourth piece of advice The nope, that's my third. Just kidding. I can't count. It's, it's all right. My fourth is if it's too cold or you just really don't want to leave the house because I get that too. Like I am, I think I'm actually an introvert, which is sometimes I'm not sure, but I think I'm sure. Um, <laughs> So if you're like me and sometimes you just don't want to leave the house and you just don't want to be around people, like even the thought of what if I run into someone on Centennial Trail uh, on the trail and then I have to like be social, that just can be overwhelming to me sometimes. So if you don't want to leave the house, then put on some sort of a cosmic kids yoga or some exercise or go noodle something on the TV where you all can move your bodies together. Moving our bodies gets our breathing, um, a different rhythm of breath, which is breath work. It gets our heart rate up. It allows our body to just feel different. And sometimes that's what we need to be able to just regulate ourselves. Okay. So noise canceling headphones, drink something either really cold or something hot. Um, take everyone for a walk outside in nature, breathe the fresh air, all the things, or do some sort of exercise together. Um, okay. So there's that one. The second question is kind of along the same lines. And I think this was a theme for this year, right? It is just that acknowledgement of how hard it is to sometimes be in the house with our kids when they have a lot and they can be extra loud. And, and it doesn't mean that I'm a bad person because I'm like, ah, this is a lot, right? That's just humans. We, sometimes it's just really hard to have all that extra input and we don't want our kids to feel like they can't be themselves, but also like it's a lot. And so this just kind of seems to be a common theme for the year. But this question is more about what do we do on a cold or rainy day, a day where we can't go outside? Maybe it's like really too cold or in the summer, like really too hot. Um, so we can't go outside. We can't move our bodies. We're literally trapped in the house. This reminds me of COVID. Ah! Oh, right. Where we're like, we had to be in our homes. Um, going outside is not an option, but we have a lot of energy. We're driving each other crazy. What do we do? So I have five things for this one, five, um, things to try activities or pieces of advice for this one. So the first one is sensory toys. So let's get our home stocked with sensory toys. Um, some of my favorites are a sensory swing. So um, there's several different kinds of sensory swings. 
Um, but the one that I like is the one that's like a big loop of fabric and the kiddos can either sit on it like a swing kind of like bunch it up and sit on it like a swing or you, you can like wrap them up in it. Sometimes my son likes me to like tie him in it. And then I just spin him a lot until he's like, eh, I'm good. And we get out and he's regulated. Right. Um, so the sensory swing would be one. This one could be tricky if you don't have a way to install it into the beams of your ceiling. Um, unless you have room for a stand, because a lot of the sensory swings can come with a stand, but they're big, they take up a lot of room. So that's just something to consider with that. Um, if you do have, um, oh, I was just going to say a tree outside, but what we're trying to talk about things not to do outside. So forget I said that, but also when you can go outside, if you have a tree that you could put a sensory swing on, that can be helpful too. Um, crash pad, our crash pad is one of my favorites. So it's just a big, um, five foot by five foot crash pad full of foam and the outside cover can come off and be washed. Um, but you can jump on it. You can, you know, run into it. You can go down the slide on the stairs and crash into it. You can jump off the couch onto it. There's just lots of, it's very like sensory seeking. Let's crash onto this crash pad. So I like that one. Um, a trampoline, whether it's the big trampoline outside when the weather is conducive to it or a smaller trampoline inside. And one of the things that it, it's, if we just say to our kiddos, Hey, it seems like you have a lot of energy. Why don't you go jump on that trampoline? They may not want to do that. But if we go with them and we're like, Hey, I'm going to count to 10 and let's see if you can jump your jump with your knees up to your chest every time while I count to 10. And then I'm going to clap. I'm going to have eye contact. I'm going to count out loud. So it's very connecting. It's engaging. And they're not just sent off to jump on the trampoline by themselves. If you have lots of kids, maybe you make it like part of an obstacle course. Oops. I kind of jumped ahead that we'll make that one next. Okay. So I'm going to come back to obstacle course, but maybe you can make it part of an obstacle course where that's part of it is you're going through something and then you jump on the trampoline as part of it. Um, so the idea is we're engaging with them and not just sending them into the other room to jump on the trampoline. And then my other new favorite thing that we actually got our kids for Christmas um, is a stair slide. And so it's just this slide that uh, connects to your stairs and you can buy, depending on how long your staircase is, you can get as many different links as you need. Um, and so we have up to four, so it can be pretty long. Um, but that it just, it doesn't take up the whole stairway either. It's like half of the stairway. So you set up the slide, we have it set up on half of our stairway. So my kids can go down the slide and come running up the stairs and go down the side and come running up the stairs. And this, like not only the left, right, left, right, right of running, our left, right, left, right. Um, I'm losing my words, but using, I don't know. I'm losing my words, but not only that, but also then they're zipping down the slide and kind of getting their adrenaline going. Right. And then we're climbing back up those stairs. So that's like some of that heavy work of doing, getting out some of that energy. Um, so that is another one of my new favorite sensory tools to have. Okay. I'm going to jump and do obstacle course next. So set up an obstacle course in your house and it can be as big or as little. It could be just one room. It could be through the whole house, but basically what we're doing is we're like finding ways to have them climb something, have them slide down something, have them jump on something, have them roll, have them hop, have them like, just think of different ways for them to be moving their body. Maybe a somersault, maybe they have to crab walk. So we're doing an obstacle course where they have to use different ways to move their body. That's going to meet the, their needs of like, um, proprioceptive on their arms, on their legs, um, the jumping, the spinning, the, what, you know, all the ways to move your body and move the different muscles. The obstacle course is the intention would be to meet those needs. So you would set it up and you do it with them, right? Again, we want to be engaged and connecting and doing it with them. Okay. I'm going to go now go back to, um, some sensory toys. So I already did like big sensory toys. I should have labeled these different. These are more like small hand toys. So think fidgets. Okay. So, um, not every kiddo is a sensory seeker. So I know that this is not going to work for everyone, but if you do have sensory seekers, then kinetic sand, shaving cream, or Play-Doh would all be good options. Also there's, if you live in the inland Northwest, um, there is a local lady who makes these fun sensory boxes and I'll link her website or Instagram in the show notes. So you can find her. We have a couple of them. 
Um, and they're just fun because they have one of them, I think has like oatmeal and little dried peas in it. And it's like a construction set. So we can play like construction with these sensory items. So it's not as messy. So um, for those of you that don't feel like doing shaving cream on your kitchen table, maybe this would be a better route to go, right? So kinetic sand, just um, anything where you can just be playing with their hands, uh, water beads, that's another great option too. So let's stock up on some of this stuff so that when we wake up and it's a yucky day outside and we're like trapped in the house, there's things that we can do with our hands. Puzzles is another one. Okay. These are clean ones. <laughs> okay. Um, the next one on my list here is let's just have our kiddos put on their swimsuits and we're going to make a pool in the bathtub, get some glow sticks. Again, we want to stock up on some of the stuff so we have it handy. We get some glow sticks, put the glow sticks in the bath, turn off the light, and they get to play with glow, glow sticks in a warm bath in their swimsuit. And it's like summertime, but not, right? Um, so that would be a really easy, fun way to just like kill some time. Um, but also like meet their needs at the same time. Be in the bathroom with them. Do not leave them in the bathroom with the lights off and the door closed. Be in there with them. Engage with them. Um, again, all of this is we're not going to send them off to do this stuff. We're going to be present with them, but it just allows them to get their needs met with the wiggles and the squeezes and all the things that they need to, so that we don't go crazy, right? <laughs> okay. Um, and then my last piece of advice is, or my last activity that would be fun is a scavenger hunt. So you would just put together, you could do, depending on the ages of your kids, you could do like, okay, everybody has to find something red, something blue, something green, like the colors of the rainbow, and then bring it back to me. Or maybe we do this as a family and we, you know, kind of follow that rule of stick together. And we're going to decide before we go in the next room. So this game, this kind of goes with the game that sometimes I teach my family is called, um, in the next room, I might spy. So it's kind of the same idea. So a scavenger hunt of, um, okay, as a group, we're all going to go now into the kitchen and we're going to try and see if we can find something round. And then we all go together. We try and find something round. Okay. Or you find on Pinterest, a list of things there. I can guarantee that if you hop on Pinterest and you do a quick search for indoor scavenger hunt, you would find so many different lists that you could just print off or put on your tablet. And we spend some time trying to find these different items. Okay. So a scavenger hunt, always a fun one. Um, invite the neighbors over, have, you know, 20 kids in your house. Why not? Right. Not right. Just kidding. Don't do that. Well, if you want to do that, I have a friend named Cassie who's been on this podcast several times who would probably do that. And that's okay. Cause that's her jam. Right. But me, I would not. Nope. I wouldn't. Okay. Um, okay. So those are the two big questions that seem to kind of come up a lot this year. Hope that was helpful for you. Um, one thing I want to do more of this year on the podcast is kind of answer some of these questions as they come up, because I find myself answering them to the person who sent me the question. But then I think I bet a lot of people have the same question. So if you have a question that you want me to answer, you can email it to me, Melissa at mendingfamilieswa.com. You can find me on Instagram, Mending Families WA, and send me a message on there. Um, I'm also on Facebook, and I am also on TikTok. So you can find me in all of those places. Send me a message. Ask me questions. If you are just like, hey, I already know the answer, but this is a good question that maybe you could touch on in your podcast, do that. I'm happy to do that. Okay. Now we're going to change gears a little bit and talk about the top three. So this is in the last two months of the year. So in November and December of 2023... Um, these three reels were the most popular on my Instagram. And so I wanted to talk about them a little bit, because I feel like there's a reason that they probably were the most popular. And so we're going to just have a little chitty chat about them. A little chatty patty. Okay. Um, so the first one was a reel. Actually, this was the most viewed reel in the last two months. And so I'm starting with this one first. Um, and the caption was, the number one mistake you're making as a parent is not having community. This one was really popular. Um, and I just want to put it out there that ooh, it's hard to make community. It's hard to make community, especially when we are in the midst of doing some of this hard work of parenting. Um, whether you're parenting kids from hard, parenting kids who have experienced adversity or parenting kids who haven't, parenting in general is hard. Like 
it's a lot of work. It takes a lot of intention. It is not easy. It's probably one of the hardest things that I say I will ever do in my life is parenting, right? Um, there's, there's, you just are like thrown into it. Um, and it's, it's like each of our kids has their own personality. And so it's not a one size fits all. And it's not like, you know, Hey, do this and things will get better (laughs) because you have to really look at each child individually and what are their needs and, um, what have they been through and do they have, uh, you know, is there a diagnosis that we're dealing with? Are, do they feel okay in their body? Do they, you know, all the stuff. So, um, so it's hard to then want to reach out and be a part of a community because one, I I've heard this a lot too, where people feel like they can't be honest about how hard it is to be a parent or, you know, we're, um, sending a kiddo to grandma's house for the weekend and feeling relief and feeling embarrassed to say that. And I just think it's okay. Like it is hard. It's really hard. And it's okay to say, I need a break. And I'm actually looking forward to having the next few days without my child. It doesn't mean I don't love my child. It doesn't even mean I don't like them. It just means that it's hard and I am human and I need a break. Um, and so I think that that is part of it is it's hard to jump into community because you don't know how people are going to react or respond to that when that's just like true. Um, one of the reasons why, so the, one of the reasons I made that real is because that's a constant thing I hear with the clients I work with is I wish that I had community. I wish that I had people around me that got it. I wish that I had people in my life a support, a support group or people in my life that I could say these things to and they wouldn't shy away and they wouldn't give me a look. They wouldn't judge me like that. They would get it and say me too. Right. Um, and so that's part of why I did develop the the monthly membership towards the end of this last year. And that's a part of why I made this post on Instagram is because that's consistent. People really feel this way. And, and so I want to be able to open that door and say, there are people who get it. There are people who will say me too. And you can be honest and say, this is hard. And we will walk alongside this with you. Um, cause we're also in it. Right. So, um, So those are my thoughts on that. I just, you know, feel like it's important, but I also acknowledge that it's really hard to find that community. So, um, if you're interested, you can check out the monthly membership. Uh, it is, you can go to www.mendingfamilieswa.com backslash membership, and you can find out all the information about that, what we do every month, how much it costs, all of that. Um, but that would be a good first step because, um, it's, it's all virtual. And so, so you don't have to make that commitment of the face to face that can be hard. And what am I going to do with my kids? And I need a babysitter. And what if my kids don't get along with their kids? Like this is way just like, baby step. So check it out if that is something you're interested in. All right. The next two were pretty even on, um, numbers of views on the reels. So, um, the first one is the caption was this, what I expect my teenager to do when I ask her to do the dishes and the sound effect was clapping and yay. Okay. So we expect our kids to be excited when we say do the dishes but that will never happen. So I have to let that expectation go. Otherwise I'll just yell or punish, punish her for having feelings. So that was the caption. And that was a big people resonated with that. And here's what I think. Here's why I think they resonated with that because we have expectations as parents. We have expectations as spouses, as friends, as coworkers. Like I have expectations of how I think things are going to go based on the lens through which I see see this situation or this relationship or whatever it may be. And the problem is that's my expectation. So then if it doesn't go that way, it feels like an assault to the system. It feels like you're attacking me. Like, why can't you just, right? And it feels so frustrating. The reality is we will probably never have our teenagers excited to do the dishes. Maybe, maybe if you have a kiddo who loves to clean, um, but we probably are not going to get the response of, yeah, I get to help you clean the house so that you feel better, mom. We're probably not going to get that. And so it's important for us to acknowledge that my expectation, I cannot put that on her because, um, I cannot put that on her because then when I'm let down, when that expectation isn't met, then I'm going to yell and I'm going to punish her 
I'm going to try and control her because I want it to go this way. And that's not healthy. That's not the, it's not best for our relationship. It's not teaching our kiddo about having a voice, about respect, about mutual respect. And so it's better to just step into it, knowing that if my expectation is to get the dishes done, they're not going to be excited. And I'm going to step into it, seeing it from their perspective. Okay. So if I ask my kiddo to do the dishes, I know from her perspective, she's not going to be excited. She's going to feel possibly activated by that because it's probably not what she expected to do today, right? I'm dampering her expectations. And so I need to shift and see it from her perspective, be willing to um, compromise. Hey, so, you know, I liked the dishes to get done today. So, um, you know, let's talk about when that can happen. What, what were you planning on doing today? And they can share like, oh, you know, I wanted to do A, B, and C. Great. So maybe when you're done with A and B, you can do the dishes real quick before you do C. Um, and let have a conversation about it instead of like dictating this is what needs to happen. Um, we have to remember that we don't control our kids. We influence our kids. Okay. All right. Let me move on to the last one. That was the most, one of the top three most popular. Um, this one was a post I made in November, which was national adoption month. Um, and the caption is this thoughts from an adoptive mama. When your child lashes out with hurtful words, like I wish you weren't my mom, or I never wanted you as my mom. Do not take it to heart. Our kids say things they don't mean in moments of survival. And typically they only lash out with those they feel the safest with safest with healing takes time. And so I think that a lot of people resonated with this one because they've heard those words. They've experienced this. And it's a good reminder that when those words are being spoken to us, it's not about us. It's about their big feelings that they have inside of them. And in that moment, they're probably in survival and not speaking their truth, but just fighting, right? They're in that fight, flight, freeze mode of like, I'm going to fight back because I'm in survival. And if I lash out at you, then that's going to hurt. And I want to hurt you, right? Um, not because they actually do, but because they're in survival, their lid is flipped and that's what comes out. Um, and so I think a lot of people resonated with that because they've actually heard those words and they're working through some of this stuff of like, how do I hear my child say that to me and not be broken by it? I have struggled with this myself and I'm so thankful for my therapist and those around me who can say, yeah, I've heard that too. I get it. And this is hard. Um, I'm so thankful for my spouse who can also gently remind me like, it's not about you, honey. You are an amazing mama. It's not about you. Um, we need people like that. And that kind of comes back to the community again. We need people in our life to just remind us of that. Right. Okay. Okay. So those, those are the top three Instagram reels. You could go check them out if you want. I'll see if I can link them in the show notes. I might be able to do that. If I can, you can watch them, um, from the show notes. So what are we looking forward to this year? I'm going to tell you what I'm looking forward to this year. Um, I have some big things happening. I'm excited about it. Um, the first thing with the podcast is I'm working on a more diverse population of people that I interview. Um, so I'm excited about that. I've got some feelers out there already. I'm hoping to get some good guests lined up this year um, that are just more diverse and give us more insight from so many different perspectives. I'm also working on getting an expert in fetal alcohol fetal alcohol spectrum disorder to come on and kind of share about that side of things and things we can maybe be paying attention to, whether we're parenting a kiddo who has that diagnosis or whether we are just in community with um, a kid, um, a family who is raising a child with that diagnosis. So I'm working on that. Um, and then just uh, the other thing I want to put out there is if you know someone that would be amazing, an amazing guest, or you've heard them speak, or you just know them personally and they have a great story to share, either send them my way or let me know how to get in touch with them. I'd be happy to reach out. Um, I just love what this last year brought as far as the podcast. And I just am looking forward to having more conversations and helping you all grow and learn and, um, just yeah, heal together. So if you know anyone, send them my way then. Okay. So that's podcast. It'll still be every week, every Monday. I know I missed last week because it was Christmas and blah, blah, blah. But 
it will be every week on Monday still this year. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Okay. So what else do I have going this year? I'm going to tell you about three other things. One is the online course. I launched it last fall. We have another round of it starting up in two weeks. So it is currently January 1st in real time. Um, and so you have a, you have two weeks to still reg register for the course if you're interested in it. So the course, what it is, is eight weeks of content and you will get um, two to three videos a week that you can watch or not watch if you don't want to. That's fine too. Um, you can always come back and watch them later. And then some activities or maybe handouts, just usually some, um, it's not just videos and it's not just reading. I wanted to also include something to do with your hands. So whether it's an activity I have you do or you write something out, um, you'll get one of those every week. Um, and then on Mondays, every Monday during the course, there will be a live call with me. So you'll be able to hop onto a live call with everyone else who is a part of the course and you can ask me your questions. And it's basically like live coaching that is included as part of the um, group coaching that is included as part of the online course. So you'll get to ask me questions. I'll probably share a little bit more snippets about the content that you learned that week. Um, and we'll do that for eight weeks. So the first, the first week of content is the week of January 8th, but we won't meet for our first live call until January 15th. So you technically have two weeks to still register for the course. I am going to close it on January 15th though, because that just would be too hard to have people jump in after we've already started meeting. So you have two weeks to register for the course. If you're interested in it, um, you can go to www.mendingfamilieswa.com um, backslash course, I believe. Oh, geez. Now I forgot, but if you go to my website, <laughs> go to the home page, um, you'll be able to find the link on there. So you can check out the course, what it all comes with, how much it costs, all of that. Um, if you have questions about it, please email me. I would be happy to answer your questions. I want to make sure you feel comfortable before you um, jump in, but I don't think you'll regret it. It'll be a great way to start the year. Okay. The second fun thing that we have going is the monthly membership. It's been going since November um, and we have a lot of fun in there. So the monthly membership is a time, um, a space for you to get together with other uh, parents, caregivers, teachers, coaches, grandparents. There's a lot of different caregiver roles that are in the group so far, but it's a space for you to get together and have peer support. So you can bounce questions off of each other throughout the month. Um, but I also do giveaways throughout the month. I do, um, monthly live training. So once a month on a Monday, you'll get a live training. Um, and so yay for training, right? That's how we keep growing as parents, caregivers, teachers, people, humans, we can't ever know it all. And so, free training every month as part of this monthly membership. It's also a live training over Zoom. So you'll get to hop on if you want to, and you can bring your questions, whether it's about that training or something that happened during the month. And again, it's kind of like live coaching that you get with me, which is super cool, right? Um, and then also freebies. So you'll get, you know, whether it's a worksheet that I provide or a poster or a game, something that will just help you continue to grow and learn and be the best you can for your kids is all part of that monthly membership. So if you're interested in that, um, you can find that on my website, www.mendingfamilieswa.com backslash membership. Um, and then the last thing I want to tell you, oh no, just kidding. One more five day challenge. Today's January 1st. And for those of you that signed up, the five day challenge does slash did start today but you can still sign up for it. You'll just probably miss today's because today's probably already went out unless you're listening to this at like six in the morning. I don't know, um, but it's not too late. So you can sign up for the free five-day challenge. And if anything, you'll just get four of the five days. It'll actually be really helpful for you to just like get little activities, nuggets of wisdom to do with your kids and with yourself this week. So it's just Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you'll get started with this new year on the right foot of just jumping into being more mindful and thoughtful of the relationships with your kids. So if you're interested in that, that one is the website for that one to sign up is www.flodesk. So flowdesk.mendingfamilies slash the number five and then day, D-A-Y. 
Okay. All of this will be in the show notes. So I know I'm giving you a lot of websites and links and things. It will all be in the show notes. The last thing I want to let you know about is our, my first in-person workshop coming up this year. Um, I am partnering with Megan Flowers, who was on my podcast in November, um, because she is my favorite book lady. And we are going to partner up and bring you a workshop that shows you how to use books and activities from Paper Pie, which is the company she sells books for, to help your kiddos grow and learn and new, learn new skills. And whether it's social skills, emotional skills, um, regulation skills. We're going to just go through some fun activities together and you will get to take home one of the activities that we talk about at the end of the workshop. So it'll be super fun. I'm so excited because it's my first in-person event. Um, I'm looking forward to it. Stay tuned for more information. So I don't have date that I can tell you yet. I actually know when it is. I just can't tell you yet. Um, so there's going to be more information coming, but I was so excited that I felt like January 1st is the day that I need to announce it. And then I'll get you more information later. How do you register? How much it costs? When is it? Where is it? I can tell you it's going to be at West Plains Roasters in Cheney if you live in the Spokane area. So I do know where it is. That's where it's going to be. Thanks to my friend, Hannah, who is the owner of West Plains. Um, so I'm excited about that. More to come on that. I'm, I think it's going to be great. So tell your friends, neighbors, sisters, cousins, brothers, everyone, um, because we will have a maximum number of registrants. So you want to be able to jump on it when we release the information. That is it. That was a longer episode than I intended. So You know, if you had to leave and come back and listen later, totally cool. I have to do that sometimes too, and that's okay. Um, So it was fun though. I had so much fun this last year with you guys. I'm looking forward to another year of more great, super fabulous content on my podcast, but also with with my business mending family. So if you don't follow me on Instagram or TikTok or or haven't even checked out my website yet, do that because it's pretty cool. And I'm excited (laughs) to just like keep sharing with you all. Okay. Well, next week I have my friend Brianne on and she actually was my son's ECAT teacher when he was three, his very first teacher. And so it was pretty fun to be able to connect with her now three years later and kind of hear what she's doing and how the journey she's been on and what she's doing um, with her education and what she's hoping to do. So I'm looking forward to you guys hearing that conversation and I will see you all next Monday. Enjoy your first week of January. Happy new year.